I've taken a look at your proposal. It's much better than the ones you showed me before, but I'd still like to make some changes. Oh, come on, not again. Isn't this the sixth proposal I've shown you? What's your issue this time? Hmm, it's a bit hard to put into words, but the design still doesn't look quite right to me. I have to say, that's a terribly vague and unconvincing explanation. Please enlighten me. What would feel more right to you? Hmm. For starters, don't you think this roof is jutting out a bit too far from the top? It looks almost like the head of a fungus. This door, too. I don't think it needs to be nearly this large. If you could reduce it to around my height, you could use the leftover materials to construct a few more rooms. I... <sighs> the roof and the door are the most fundamental parts of a building. If we were to change them, then what would be left of the design? Even if the soul of the building won't be lost, all traces of architectural style would be gone. Anyone with the slightest inkling of architectural knowledge would know to leave them alone! Oh, I understand the principles of what you are saying, of course, but the truth remains that I'm still a bit unhappy with the design as is. Is there anything else that you can do? Oh, actually, I just got an idea. Can we get rid of all the extraneous sections on the roof? So the whole design will just be one vertical structure, similar to that of a tree trunk? What? Don't architects often say that symmetry makes everything more balanced and pleasing to the eye? This way, the proportions will be completely balanced. I... I really don't know how you managed to come up with such a ridiculous idea. Wait, don't tell me. Someone hired you specifically to commission me and put me through the ringer? Come to think of it, though, I really don't think I've gotten on anyone's bad side recently. Anyway, that's it. I will not be working on this commission anymore. Goodbye. Maybe you can find yourself some other genius who'll be able to satisfy your demands. Hey, young man, please wait! Oh, God. Were my requests out of line? If only I didn't fall for that scam last time. was truly the worst decision ever. Hmm? Oh, hey. I wasn't expecting to run into you here. Actually, while we're on that, what are you doing here at the tavern? Don't listen to anyone who says that drinking is an elegant pastime. It's no good for your health. Ah, uh, so you saw all that, did you? Ugh, I thought I was in the clear. I made sure to double-check that nobody I knew was around. <sighs> Anyway, thanks for looking out for me. Honestly, it wasn't that big of a deal. I'm used to it by now. Stress is just an inescapable part of being a working adult. Boss, I'll have a glass of wine. Same as last time. Do you want something too? I'll put it on my tab. Wine and a glass of juice coming right up. I know you're already keeping a secret from me. 
But if you could add this one to the list as well, I'd really appreciate it. Arguing with a client is not a good look for me. If word gets out, other potential clients might be afraid to work with me. That guy, though... What was he even going on about? All those ridiculous demands of his? He's just a blabbering fool trying to act like a know-it-all. Another glass, please, boss. I'm not leaving today till someone has to carry me out. You've got it, sir. <laughs> I gotta say, though, it almost feels like you're saying that every other day now. It really is every other day that you'd run into a client who knows nothing about construction requirements or architectural style. If this was in the past, I'd never have gone through six whole drafts trying to accommodate the client's preferences. But perhaps getting used to this just means that I've grown numb to it. I've worked on so many projects since graduation, and none of them have been approved at the first pass. I would spend a lot of time altering my designs, and by the time the clients were finally satisfied, all my passion and enthusiasm would be gone. It feels like I'm straying further and further from my artistic vision with every change I have to make. I suppose, though, that just sticking to your guns and completely disregarding other people's feedback would also not be a good thing. All of this makes for a real paradox, one that particularly crops up in my work, too. In the end, what is the true meaning of art? Should I see it as a divine gift of inspiration from the gods, or an expression of the light of my own wisdom? Here's your drink. Hmm. How are you already spouting nonsense after just one glass? Your tolerance is usually much better than that. Boss, what do you think is the meaning of art? The meaning of art? Really, my friend, who in Sumeru understands art better than you? Anyway, I don't know about art, but I do know that I'm interested in business, and some patrons are waiting to be served. So, you'll have to excuse me for now. Just holler if you need anything. What do you think, Traveler? Exactly. So our thoughts on the meaning of art are rather similar. In Sumeru, and especially Sumeru of the past, the arts are not a popular discussion topic. Trying to talk about the arts is basically the key to killing any conversation. It's too bad that I'm not in my best form today. Otherwise, we could have talked about this for a little longer. Sounds great to me. I don't even want to think about this project anymore. But what should we do? It's probably not a good idea to just drink until I pass out here. Huh? Where did that come from? I mean, it's not like it's some kind of secret. You probably already know some bits and pieces of my past. My mother is also an architect. I've always adored her drawings, and when I was young, I used to sit next to her and watch her bring all kinds of buildings to life on paper. You could say my interest in architecture just naturally grew with time. Perhaps. In fact, I have also seen my mother argue with her clients, but she would always quickly find the motivation to return to her work. Unfortunately, I've barely had any contact with her since she remarried and moved abroad. Even if I wanted to ask her about her ability to stay positive after an argument, it would seem rude to barge into her life again over something as trivial as that. I did remember something else, though. When my mother left, she only carried some small personal luggage with her. She left most of the belongings in the house to me. At the time, she even told me that it would be great if I could learn a few lessons from her life experiences, so my life and career could go a little more smoothly. I hadn't quite come to grips with my emotions, and didn't really have it in me to go through any sentimental items. So I just packed anything with memories away in a box and haven't reopened it since. It's been a really long time. Now that so many years have passed, maybe I have finally developed the maturity I need to face those memories without losing my mind. Yeah. I should dig it out and take a look. Uh, huh? Ah, uh, sorry, I've had too much to drink and wasn't thinking clearly. You're right. 
I should do these kinds of things with the support of a friend. Uh, speaking of that, I can call you a friend now, right? Either way, thanks for reminding me that I can invite you to come along. Had I just gone back by myself, it would have looked like I'm deliberately trying to keep things from you. Ugh, thinking too hard about the words is giving me a headache, so I'll just give it to you straight. <clears throat> Thanks to your advice, I have decided to put my current projects on pause for now, and spend some time trying to rekindle the passion for my craft. If you want to stick around and see how this will turn out, you'll be sure to encounter some bits and pieces of my past. Do you think you'd find that too boring? All right, then let's head back together. I mean, you already know where I live. <laughs> Who knew that the day would come when I too would have some friends over? Let me see. I should have tidied up the place before I left the house this morning. Oh, Hatham shouldn't be home now either. He's usually in the records room at this time of the day. Anyway, there's no more time for drinks. I'll go take care of the bill. All Hatham isn't in, so feel free to sit wherever. I'll bring out the box. <sighs> oh, nothing. I just didn't realize how much time had passed. The box is pretty dusty, which means it's already been a while since I've moved into this place. And many years since my mother moved to Fontaine. I'm happy for her. I hope she'll be able to find happiness there. She raised me all by herself after my father passed away. It definitely wasn't easy for her. Anyway, enough about that. Let's see what I packed into this box. Ah, uh, what are all these things? Oh, I remember now. This is a drawing I made in Port Ormos. Obviously, I wouldn't call it anything special now, but I was less than five years old when I made this drawing. That's more than 20 years ago. <laughs> you could say it's pretty good for a child of that age. Hmm, now that I've said that out loud, I suppose I do have some level of artistic talent, right? Criticism and self-doubt have always been a part of the artistic process. Without criticism, there can be no improvement. It's normal for me to question my abilities from time to time. I admit that I may have spent a little too long questioning myself this time around, but as you know, the heart tends to dwell on whatever it pleases. <sighs> anyway, never mind. The more I talk about it, the less confident I feel. Let's see what else we have in the box. Ah! My building blocks! It's been years since I've last seen these. When I was a kid, I used to stack them super high, and could even stabilize the tower to keep it from tumbling over. Oh, and this blueprint. <laughs> I made it by copying my mother's sketch and the aspect ratio was horrendous. It's still technically the first blueprint I made myself, though. I was super proud of myself when I finished it, and put it in the same pile as my mother's sketches, hoping she'd notice and compliment me for my good work. Unfortunately, my mother didn't realize that I had put it there. When she had a meeting with a client, the next day she handed my blueprint to him by mistake. The client was completely confused by this new blueprint, but apparently he felt too tongue-tied to question such a famous architect. It was only a few days later that he finally gathered up the courage to pay my mother a visit. He asked, The door in this blueprint is even taller than the roof. Is this supposed to be part of the design? My mother took me with her to personally apologize to the client several times. She didn't scold me about it in private, though. Instead, she went over all the steps required to draw a good blueprint, and was very patient throughout the whole process. I still remember it like it was yesterday. Hmm. Let's see, is there anything else left in this box? Huh. What was this again? Ah, this is my mother's notebook. She used to write and sketch in it all the time. When I was a child, I used to be super fascinated by this notebook, and always pestered my mother to let me read it. After asking her a few times, she told me that I could read it as long as I could guess the password. Huh. I wonder why she didn't take this notebook with her. Did she leave it to me on purpose? <laughs> if only I could. I never managed to guess the password. Hey, it's not a matter of time, it's a matter of inspiration. That's what we need to guess the password. Who knows, maybe this time something will click in my head and the answer will just present itself. Let me think. Hmm. 
What could it be? <laughs> I could tell what you were thinking. Don't worry, I tried all the easy guesses a long time ago. I've tried my name, my father's name, my mother's name, my grandparents' names on both sides, and all of our birthdays. I've tried every name and number remotely related to my family. I've even tried stuff like Love You Cave, Take Care, and Yours Truly. I've tried every cheesy phrase and well-wish in the book, but this lock has refused to budge. I wouldn't try that route again. I have a hunch that it won't be that simple. Also, if she really did use something like that, she'd never hear the end of it from the folks over at Haravatat if they ever found out. So we could find someone who was close to my mother and see if they might know anything? Hmm... I see what you're saying, but who should we talk to for that? My mother was never really the one to be social. My father was the one with more friends, but all those connections were severed when he died. Let me think. Is there still someone at the Academia who would know my mother? Ah, actually, there is someone! Professor Zaha Hadi. Huh, you've never really heard of her? She's a famous Kasharwar scholar and leading expert in formal garden design. My mother studied under her as a student many years ago. Professor Zaha Hadi published many works during her career, so I was able to learn a lot by studying her essays. If there's anyone who still remembers my mom, it'd be her. She's older now and is no longer teaching at the academia. But if I remember correctly, she spends most of her time around the Bimarstan area. Let's go take a look. We might run into her if we're lucky. Hmm. What am I supposed to do now? Ah, <sighs> forget it. I'll just head back. Tainari? What are you doing here? Oh, it's you. Good to finally see you again. I came into the city to buy some experiment reagents, hoping to bring them back with me to Gandarvaville. But as soon as I got here, I noticed someone banging on Cyrus's door. You've all heard of Cyrus, right? He's an ex-sage and Sino's adoptive father. I was thinking about going over to ask what's happening. That granny over there may appear old and frail, but her vocal cords certainly sound loud and healthy as ever. Granny? Yeah, she's just over there. You can go check out the situation yourselves in a moment. <laughs> Kave, were you at the tavern? I had a quick drink or two. Uh, can you still smell the alcohol? Drinking in broad daylight. Really? You want to pass out by the road and get run over by a sumpter beast like some mindless fungus, huh? And you, Traveler? You didn't try to stop him? Um, uh, I... Uh... <sighs> you look like a wreck, Kaveh. What happened? Are you feeling down again? <sighs> you know what? I'm hosting a meal at Pardis Di tomorrow evening. Do you want to come? Uh-huh. Oh, I had no idea. Uh, let me think for a moment. Uh, I'll come if I can find some time. All right. Then I'll plan on reserving two seats for you. I'll be heading back to Gandarvaville for now. I have a feeling that argument over there is going to continue for quite some time. It might be best if we don't get involved. A granny who lives nearby. Let's go take a look. Plan on keeping yourself locked in there, huh? Fine by me. If you're not going to come out, then I'm not going to leave. My tomato was growing so well, it had all the potential to become the best tomato this year. And you cut it straight from the vine! I already told you I had nothing to do with it. Why would I take a tomato that's still weeks from ripening? You'd have to be awfully green as an investigator to think it was me. <sighs> <laughs> you see, the word green here can refer to both the color of the tomato and the fact that your skills could use some. Enough nonsense! Just come out and face me, you coward! You're out of your mind. If I've actually done something wrong, then get a mantra and pull me out by force, why don't ya? Oh, why you? Professor Zahahadi? And who are you? Oh, Kave. Fancy seeing you here. How long has it been? Come on, get over here and let the professor take a good look at you. 
Not bad, not bad. You've grown taller again. Um, Professor, what's going on here? Ah, it's no big deal, really. A few of us old scholars got bored in our retirement and decided to put together a vegetable growing competition. At the end, whoever loses will have to go up on stage and do a performance for the winners. Which brings us to our current predicament. <laughs> My tomato was sure to win until a certain someone decided they couldn't bear to lose. Hey, don't try to defame me in front of the kids. If we're airing out each other's dirty laundry now, then why don't we talk about you sneaking into Janot's garden the other night? Ahem! <clears throat> Lucky for you, seeing these youngsters come to pay their respects today has put me in a better mood. I'll let you off the hook for now. Come on, let's go. We'll take our conversation elsewhere. He doesn't need to be a part of it. Uh, uh yes, uh, of course. <laughs> Is Farnak still doing well? Yes, as far as I know. She left for Fontaine some time ago and started a new life for herself. She's still doing work related to architecture, though. Ah, yes. I did hear about that. Did that upset you at all? No, not at all. She's already sacrificed a lot raising me as a single mother. That's good to hear. Your mother did struggle quite a bit those few years. It's probably a good thing that she found a new place to call home. Sometimes I wonder if things were harder for her because she was so beautiful. People were always drawn to her beauty first, only to realize she had a sensitive and vulnerable heart underneath. She was still quite young when she first joined my class as a student. Beautiful and radiant with her golden hair, yet quiet and single-minded. She seemed like a lass from some aristocratic house who was seeing the outside world for the first time. She had to make a lot of drastic changes in her life to raise you on her own. Even during her time in the academia, she was a thorough perfectionist. If she was unsatisfied with something she had made, she'd insist on redoing it, even if I was perfectly happy with it. She had many admirers, and they'd always fill up the first few rows of seats, hoping they could get closer to her sitting in the first row. If it were any of my other classes, you'd have found nobody sitting in the front. But every time I saw her, she was always in that same rigid pose. She'd have one hand on her forehead, with the other clutching her pencil. Her eyebrows would be knitted in a frown as she concentrated on the blueprint in front of her. I'm sure she had many difficult moments in her life. How did she cope with the stress? I'm not too sure. She never talked about such things with me. She rarely opened up to other people, you know. I do remember one time, though, when she got into a heated argument with a friend. She said something I found very memorable. She said, True art cannot be understood, but as an artist, I wish some people could understand its meaning and value. If you ask me, that's probably the greatest source of pain for geniuses of their craft. It's extremely hard for them to find someone who can truly understand their ideas. So that's how it is. I wonder if the password could be... Mm -hmm. I tried both just now. Seems those aren't it either. What are you trying to do? My mother left her notebook to me, but it has a password and I haven't figured out what it is yet. I'm trying to learn more about her so I'd have a better chance at cracking the code. Thank you for all that you told us. <laughs> it's the least I can do. Talking to youngsters like yourself makes me feel younger, too. Honestly, looking at you now, I can see how much you resemble her. It's almost as if she's standing right in front of me again. Your personalities are quite alike, too. You're both stubborn and both a little awkward. Of course, I'm sure the similarities are mostly superficial. But so long as you continue to harbor those traits, 
you'll find a lot of difficulties in your work. I've taught a lot of students over my career, and in my experience, very few genius architects of Kasharawar ever found happiness for themselves. They would know exactly what they want to express and fight for it tooth and nail which inevitably led to arguments with their clients. Some clients would choose to respect the architect's vision or just let the argument go because of the architect's reputation, but those are the rare ones. When Farnak first graduated, she was getting into arguments with her clients nearly every single day. I think it only got a little better when she met your father. I see, but... Could he understand the designs my mother made? No, I think they were probably beyond him, too. But despite that, he still stayed next to her, listening to her joys and sharing in her sorrows. Farnak had many admirers, but she ended up choosing your father. His support probably played a part in that decision. Hmm. So instead of understanding, perhaps all we need is just companionship. Huh. It worked! Oh, was that the right password? Yes! Then you should be on your way, child. Find a quiet place and see what she wanted to say to you. Being the awkward person that she is, I suppose there were many things that Farnet could never say out loud. Instead, she probably left them in her diary, hoping that they would make their way to you one day. If you're ever in a mood to chat again, just come and find me here. You're always welcome to discuss architecture topics with me as well. Thank you so much, Professor. <laughs> There's no need to be so formal. I'll let you kids go. It's time for me to take another stroll around the vegetable garden. I wonder what my mother could have written about. They all say Zaha Hadid's class is the toughest, but I think it's actually not too bad. On the other hand, though, Structural mechanics is definitely a pain, no matter how you try to approach it. <sighs> I doubled down and managed to get through it in the end. I met someone special. At first, I didn't think much of him. <laughs> but now, I feel very happy whenever I get to spend time with him. We decided to name our son Kave. I don't think a younger me would have ever imagined forming such an intimate bond with another person. Back then, I lived only in the shadow of myself, as well as that of the dream in my heart. The bad news came. And even though it's been several days now, I still can't bring myself to come to terms with what happened. My eyes are so swollen, it's hard to see. What if they're all lying to me, and this is just a long, cruel dream? But I have to face reality. I still have someone to take care of. No matter what happens, I'll do my best to raise my son on my own. Hmm. Huh? Is this... a drawing? Seems like it was done by my mother. This blonde man was probably my father. But who are the other people in the picture? Huh? Why do a few of them look somewhat familiar? From the dates in the notebook, she probably drew this more than 30 years ago. I hadn't even been born yet. Maybe we were thinking too much. Oh, there are a few lines written in the diary about this as well. The one who invited us to the gathering is a talkative woman. Including us, three couples showed up. There was also a person who came alone. The talkative woman introduced everyone to each other. She spoke really quickly, so I couldn't quite catch everything she said. But I also didn't feel like asking her to repeat herself. My husband seems to be friends with the man with long ears. I couldn't really join their conversation, so I've resigned myself to sitting in a corner and drawing in my notebook. I don't think I'd be able to become friends with any of these people. Especially that stiff-looking couple. That man is certainly very handsome. But he would constantly alternate between disjointed and serious ways of talking. His wife is a bit more bearable. We were not acquainted with each other to begin with, and I doubt we'll see each other again after this gathering. The ambiance of this gathering is surprisingly pleasant, however. Talking to people can allow us to find some 
peace after a long day. Maybe my son will also partake in these gatherings in the future. I hope he'll be able to make many friends. Who would have thought my mother used to attend that kind of thing? It seems she was only good at talking about her own work and found it difficult to join into other conversations. As a result, she often kept to herself and would be off to the side, drawing. There's more written on the back. Oh, it seems like it was written to me. Kave. I was both overjoyed and distressed when I learned of your decision to continue your studies in Kasharwar. You are very talented, and I am confident that you will become an architect of much acclaim. However, the more talented you are as an artist, the more misery and anguish you may encounter. No one will be able to help you during your journey as an artist. But outside of your life as a creator, you can learn to form connections with other people and enjoy many other things in life. It's the only way to alleviate your suffering. Whenever you feel down, seek out a friend to sit and have a chat. You can accumulate joy and fulfillment by spending time with them. The positive feelings you gain will get you through the long and difficult years. Never forget that companionship is the most important thing of all. So that's the answer she prepared for me. She really thought long and hard about me and my future. Well, now that I've read her words, do you think I should accept Tainari's invite and attend that dinner at Pardisti? Uh, the thought definitely crossed my mind. Although it'd be nice to get together with friends and chat the night away, I don't want to bring down other people's moods because I'm sad. Besides, don't most people hate the feeling of seeing their friends troubled and being unable to help? And what's worse, nearly all of my problems can't be easily resolved with some encouraging words or gesture. And don't forget, I'm also older than all of them. As their senior, I should appear to be a bit more responsible. You're not wrong, but I keep feeling like I haven't really helped them much in return. You wait, do you mean it? You're not making fun of me, are you? I've gotten so used to sarcasm that I can't tell what's genuinely a compliment anymore. Wait, by fun, did you mean... You know what, I'm not going to overthink it. I'll see you tomorrow at Pardis Di. together about Kale's studies. Everyone hold hands! Once dinner's over, I'll tell them the joke I came up with yesterday. Oh, Haytham also got my invite, right? Will he be coming to join us? <laughs> that guy? He's never been a fan of social gatherings. I wouldn't get my hopes up if I were you. Are you sure? All right, then. I guess we won't wait for him. Yeah, let's go. Uh, I mean, maybe we should give him a little more time. We can keep chatting for a while longer. Oh, sure. You still haven't told me. What's the occasion for getting us together here at Pardis Di? We're celebrating the end of the first phase of Kale's studies. I wanted to thank you all for the help you've given her along the way. Then where's Kale? She said she wanted to show everyone a bit of what she's learned, so she's still doing some last-minute prep at home. She'll be here shortly. Anyway, let's get started. <sighs> to tell you the truth, I'm actually not so confident that the second phase will go as well as the first. The curriculum will become a lot more involved, and I'm worried that she won't be able to get through all of it. I was hoping we could brainstorm about it together before she gets here. I knew this wouldn't be just a simple free dinner. Is that why you also invited all Haytham? Yes. I thought it would be good if we could all put our heads together about this. Anyway, let's take a quick trip down memory lane. What did you guys do when you ran into a problem that you didn't know how to solve? Or got assigned a project that you knew you weren't gonna finish on time? Never happened to me. I'd just pull another all-nighter. 
You two are hopeless. Does anyone have a more useful answer to the question? Ooh, that's a good point. Confidence is the most important thing. Once you lose your sense of confidence, it'll become all but impossible to find the motivation to study. Hmm, this could be a potential direction. I have already redesigned the literacy curriculum, and I was originally hoping to ask Alhatham for his opinion, but... It's very simple. Instead of focusing on the amount of material you would like to teach, focus on the amount the student would be able to remember. Wow, you actually showed up. I could probably count the number of times you've actually come to gatherings like this on just one hand. It's still more than the number of times you've managed to get a proposal approved on the first try. Hmm. As long as you're still aware. So, what made the difference this time? Are you looking to drink your sorrows away with some friends? That's your purpose for being here, not mine. Don't project your ways of thinking onto me. So you're saying the only reason you came is to help Tainari with his brainstorming? Precisely. Kale will have a long road in front of her. Hey, just to get one thing clear. Even if Kale manages to make her way to the Academia, we cannot let her enroll in her Avatat. Kasharwar is obviously the best choice for her. She's been a trainee Forest Ranger for so long, she'll definitely be good with her hands. What are you saying? Spontamad is the better choice. It's where I graduated from, after all. Then what about Amorta? That's the Darshan her master actually graduated from. There are only two other Darshans left. We might as well select all of them on her enrollment application. You? I'm trying to have a serious discussion here. Traveler, you aren't associated with any of the six Darshans. In your opinion, which Darshan would be the best choice for Kale? Well said. Agreed. And my goal in inviting you here was to gather some thoughts on the execution of this second phase. Phase 2 far exceeds Phase 1 in both curriculum complexity and the speed of instruction. I hope Kali has prepared herself for what is coming. Hey, what are you thinking now? Please don't tell me you're planning on lending her those abstruse books from your home library. Actually, I was thinking about lending her a professions guide. I'll make sure to write, Don't Become an Architect, on the front page of that. <laughs> You're right, I can't deny that. Is there another phase after phase two? What's the ultimate goal of all of this? Are we trying to prepare her for a job in the academia? Uh, we don't need to think that far ahead. Uh, hold that thought, though. I think my vegetables are done. I'm telling you, that client had no idea what he was talking about. No matter what I did, he had something bad to say about it. Have you considered finding another client? Ah, they're all the same. I haven't had a good night's sleep for months now. <laughs> Who do they think they are, ordering me to alter my design over and over again just because they have some mora? It's too late now to change careers. You might as well try to find some joy in the pain. Besides, you'll be getting up in the middle of the night to make edits to your own design even when the client doesn't request it. No. That's not true. Cheer up, Cave. I'll tell you a new joke. We'll save that for the end, Sino. You can keep it to yourself until then. <laughs> I... Whatever. I'm not going to use my brain anymore. Let's drink tonight to our heart's content.